Thank you so much, Nikita, our new vice chair of the CNCFTOC. Um, my name is Lin Sang Bangju, KubeCon Paris. I'm the head of open source at solo.io. As Nikita said, I'm also CNCFTOC and also the Istio Project TOC. Uh, hi, my nickname is Dims. Uh, I wear some hats in the community as well. I work for AWS and I'm part of the TOC with Lynn and Nikita as well. So um, let's uh, quickly get started. I know this is the last uh, keynote and you're itching to go back. Uh, so thanks for staying. Uh, so here are fe fellow uh, current T TOC members. Uh, we are the elected body um, in the TOC. So most of the if we, it's the technical oversight committee, and we have 11 people. Um, we rotate. Uh, we have some new members, including me. And this is my second round here. Uh, Nikita is our vice chair. Uh, we just create. Go, Nikita. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, if you see any of them, uh, please you know, have a chat with them and uh, get to know them, because uh, these are your representatives uh, in the community. So um, you've been. For the last few times, uh, uh, for the last few months, this is what we've been doing. We've, uh, there's been incubations and graduations. Uh, we've had a really good set of sandbox projects coming in. The TOC itself uh, works on a bunch of things. Uh, one of the things we got started on, uh, you, uh, you heard from the folks working on the AI working group, um, those are the kind of things that we end up organizing through the TOC and the tags. Uh, we wrote down a lot of the things that we were doing somewhat, uh, you know, ad hoc, or maybe uh, we were not doing it very consistently. We started writing those things down. Uh, most recently, one of the things that we ended up writing down was, hey, if you're a project, then you need to kind of write down what is your expectation from uh, that the end, end users can expect from you in terms of releases. Um, so we had a long uh, two-day offsite in CERN, and thanks for the CERN team to sponsor uh, the offsite. And the, some of the TOC members ended up uh, going and visiting the large hadron collider too. So it's always exciting. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, CERN. So uh, the project's moving levels is a consistent, uh, consist consistently, you know, is. A, the restriction around it, right? Like, uh, what does it mean? What do I need to do? What is there a checklist? Uh, how, how do I go about doing it? How do I prep and things like that? So that is another thing that we ended up writing down as well. So uh, going with the theme today of reminiscences. Uh, so this is the architecture diagram from 2015. Um, you know, there's lots of things that are not there. There's only some things that are there. Um, and in 2015, uh, all these uh, folks uh, said some nice things when we got started. Uh, 2016, uh, Prometheus uh, was one of the things that came out. Kubernetes had a bunch of releases. And this was the first time in 2016 was you could get your swag, right? <laughs> so um, the, the first one was definitely the Kubernetes one. Uh, 2017, landscape. We had already had a bunch of things in going into it. And uh, the call out here is definitely to Chris Nova and Brian Grant and a whole bunch of new uh, projects that ended up uh, getting started here. So this is by no means uh, you know, comprehensive or anything like that. This is my reminiscence of uh, what was happening around that time. 2018, KNative, HCD, and uh, you know, Kelsey, and Sandbox proposal, that's when we started having multiple projects coming into the sandbox and like giving them a space to work in together. Uh, 2019, we started the tags. They were, they were called SIGs back then. Um, and if you note a quote from Corey, I don't know if Corey is here this week, but uh, you know, 2019, he said, uh, five years, we might not care about Kubernetes. So uh, that's, that's always fun to revisit. Uh, K3S made an appearance, and in 2020, uh, we had SIG observability. And uh, you know, uh, there are some some of my favorite people here, uh, including Ian. Uh, in 2021, eBPF uh, came up, and Cilium, and uh, 
uh, a bunch of other things uh, as well. So uh, in 2022, was, Wasm turned around and like, you know, made, us, uh, made its appearance and a bunch of other uh, uh, things that ended up starting around it. So through this journey, we've grown to like 184 projects as of right now. You've heard the statistics today and uh, hoping that, uh, you know, we continue to grow and stabilize and uh, mature and uh, graduate. So, uh, and in 2023, this is one of my favorite pictures. Uh, you can see how large the Kubernetes community uh, ended up growing to. And uh, one of the favorite release artifacts that we have for, uh, this was 129, is the Mandala. Uh, you know, I really love it. Uh, thanks to the Kubernetes release team for uh, having consistent, stable quality releases out and helping us do it. Uh, so we are up and down, left, right. We have covered everything. And uh, <laughs> the guy is screaming. <laughs> so knowing where we are, let's take a look at where we are going to go next. Thank you so much, James, for a fabulous overview of the past nine years. So what about next decade? I want you to think about in your head, what do you think? Uh, Tim Hall can give an amazing uh, next decade for Kubernetes in Chicago. And we were so inspired. So we reach out to the leaders in the TOC community and ask them, what do they think the next decade should be? What technology will or continue to be hot? And this is the output of the survey. Not surprisingly, uh, over 75% user sets AI, sustainability, security, and the edge computing will continue to be hot along with uh, web, um, web assembly and service mesh. What about the next big disruption? Think about in your head, see if you agree with us. Cassie starts with cloud native AI. Chris is always looking ahead, the many of us. Wasm combined with CNCF projects will become the best runtime for AI and LMs. Uh, John believes simplicity is the next big disruption, which really resonates with me. Uh, Alex, talk about consolidation. How many of you feel we have too many projects out there that really need a consolidation? What about workloads? Workloads are the ones that really interact with our end user. Tackles that talk about Kubernetes workloads are multi-cluster that needs to share data. And Jimmy, you talk about heterogeneous workload, uh, non-traditional workload, and repurpose Kubernetes to support these heterogeneous workloads. And the anonymous leader talk about developers are so tired about endless complexities. And if that resonates with you, he really believes our serverless API is going to be the next big disruption. Penny is so environmental, think about sustainability, waste removal, and overall optimization for a whole ecosystem. So where do you think the cloud native is going in the next decade? Likely actually towards cloud native. I really like this quote because I feel in the past, we spent so much time building Kubernetes, building plugins extend on top of Kubernetes so we can actually be cloud native going forward. And Emily Fox, who is our TOC chair, believes we're going to see more strong in the ecosystem and integrate existing infrastructure out there. And Chris is always ahead. Um, <laughs> cloud native is becoming ubiquitous already on the server, but it's expanding to the edge and more. Konani believe we're going to see more work happening outside of the cloud. Cloud is well, and cloud native is how. I thought that was really interesting about cloud native is how. Uh, David believes cloud native is going to be the commodity. I think that's going to resonate with many of you uh, here for the next decade. And similar to what VM was 
in the past. I truly believe we are not going to need to talk about Kubernetes, service mesh, or even networking because they're just going to be infrastructure. And I believe Dave agree with me. He said stuff like service mesh or web assembly would move towards where Kubernetes is today, so we don't need to talk about it. And another anonymous leader who is also a former TOC member said, boring, useful infrastructure. This really resonates with me. Uh, what about AI? We can't talk about next decade without AI. Ali starts talking about enabling AI, period. And Daniel adds on to cloud native projects is going to play a vital role in operationalized AI workflows. Brandon added on to we're going to see move, more move towards be able to run the same workload and scale with much less footprints. And Vinay added on to cost and sustainability is going to be a big focus and AI will be heavily used to optimize cloud spending. What about the users? I believe the users are the center of the stage. Last not the least, we can't forget them. We're going to see plenty of consolidation. Cloud Native have always been the lead for the developers and the platform engineers. Bernatina believes we're going to see more user cases around the AI and new ways to applying AI to existing applications and self-service platform. I think that really resonates with me. We're going to see a lot of innovations out there. And Priyanka believes that we're going to see a portable, interoperable AI stack is the cloud native option. I love that. Now, do you agree with us where cloud native is going? If you agree or disagree, we would love to invite you all to join us at the TOC panel where all the other TOC members will be there and the panel will be moderated by Chris. The panel is at 11.55 today. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Hope to see you there.